Welcome to this episode of Encountering Jesus. My name is Cindy Johnston and I'm your host. You are listening to my book, Stairway to Heaven's Door. This book is copyrighted 2023 and all rights are reserved. No part of this book may be reproduced without permission. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Now here's the book. Chapter 4 Building Our Faith When my divine encounters began, I had no grid for how to talk about them or what they were for. I knew that when I shared them with others that I got some very strong reactions. As you would expect there were some people in awe of the stories I would tell, but just as many were either very wary or downright concerned. I found that most Christians were very hesitant to believe something so unusual from someone they didn't know. But my friends and family accepted what I said with a measure of uncertainty. Overall, their reaction mirrored my own as I was still working through what was really happening. Over these eight years I have puzzled over the unusual reactions from my Christian friends. Most of us had been taught that meeting with Jesus in our quiet times was a good thing. But I could see that when a few Christians, me included, started talking about actually seeing Jesus personally then that wasn't really understood. Finally, I came to this question for Jesus. Why Jesus, is it so strange and unfamiliar for most Christians to have face-to-face times with you in the Spirit? It has taken a while for the answers to come as I too struggled with this. Here is what I believe Jesus has shown me. Let's start off with the corporate church and what it teaches about having face-to-face encounters with Jesus in the Spirit. As a whole it seems to me that the church has felt that divine encounters are only for those few people who have a special calling from God or are those most deserving who are holy and pure. Most of us don't feel we fit into either of these categories. I know I didn't. I think that is why I kept asking Jesus to prove to me that all this was real. But he rarely would do this when I needed it to believe. Instead. He usually did this when I was already trusting him with my childlike faith. I talk about this more in depth in my book Heaven's Door, but in a nutshell, here is what I have come to understand. Jesus is working through our faith to draw us into these encounters with him. I have found that Jesus needs us simply to believe he can make them happen. But if the church as a whole teaches us that these encounters are not for everyone then that diminishes the very faith, we need to actually have them. That is why we must understand more fully the problem with how the corporate church sees these encounters. The first thing you need to understand is that it is not uncommon for the church to sometimes have a lack of clarity about the things of God for a time. Then when the time is right God brings fresh revelation. We see this happening throughout history as God has steered mankind and his church closer to himself. Over and over there have been amazing reformations and revelations that have transformed the church and changed the social norms of cultures and even the world. One example of this is what happened with the Word of God. Most of us could not even imagine what it would be like not to have our own copy of the Bible written in our own language. We can see what a powerful impact having Bibles easily accessible to everyone has had on the world. But this hasn't always been the case. There was about a thousand years that access to the Word of God was denied and kept out of reach from most people. It took some very brave men to oppose these wrong ideas about how to manage God's Word. Through their sacrifice and efforts they made it possible for common people to begin having more access to the Word of God in their own language. Now of course this didn't happen overnight, but these men brought about a reformation to the church that changed how the corporate church saw God's Word and who should have it. We see this same thing happening with our access to knowing God personally face to face. Unknowingly, the church has made this seem unattainable by making personal encounters with God seem uncommon and unlikely. By focusing on God's holiness and superiority we have diminished God's greatest desire in that we be intimate and close to Him. And by putting too much emphasis on our calling, serving, 
and working for God over our personal relationship then we reduce our place with God as his children to that of mere servants. Overall, I am seeing a shift in these subtle but undermining ideas about what it means to be a child of God. When I first began having these encounters, I could only find a handful of people talking about this. Then over the three years I noticed a dramatic increase in those who talk about having encounters with Jesus. I believe this is because we are in a time of church reformation which is changing our basic ideas of God's holiness and what it means to be drawn into a deep and personal relationship with him. I love how Jesus helped me to see this so clearly. He was the one that reminded me of how the church once withheld the word of God from common men. But now we know that was the very thing God wanted. By us having a Bible of our own and in our own language we can learn directly from God as we read it. This same thing is now happening as we gain access to the person of God through these encounters with him in the spirit. Knowing all this helps our faith increase and in turn this causes us to have expectation that as God's children we can know him personally, intimately. When our faith is strengthened then Jesus can use it to bring about more and more encounters with him. Treasures in heaven. Another thing I did not understand when I first began having these encounters was the fact that God purposely hid his kingdom and even salvation from those who are prideful, with self-serving motives. As I've mentioned we see this discussed in detail in 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. So first I want to talk about what Jesus says about the kingdom of God and what it is like before I talk more about this scripture passage. In Matthew 6 verses 19 to 21 it says, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. In both of these parables the kingdom of heaven is so precious to that person who finds it that they go and sell everything they have to own it. Jesus makes this concept clear in Matthew 6 verses 19 to 21, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. With these scriptures in mind, it would seem to me that access to Jesus and to his heavenly kingdom are hidden from those hearts that want only to exploit them for their selfish purposes. So, in a way you could say that our access to Jesus and his kingdom are in direct proportion to how much we value them. Have we sold everything to possess them or are we still holding back some of what we want? After this scripture about our heart being where our treasure is Jesus talks about how we cannot serve God and be in love with money at the same time. We live in a culture and a time when everything seems to be based on money. This is something Jesus has had to deal with me in my own heart. No matter how rich or poor we are it can be that our need of money will control us when we aren't trusting God to meet all our needs. We see this further down in Matthew 6 when Jesus teaches us that we should not worry about what we will eat or drink or wear. My point in this is that our simple faith in God to care for us is foundational. If we don't trust God for the things in this life, how will we trust him for the one to come? We need this time with God to get to know him personally to build our trust and our faith. We are his children and as such he is going to be a good father to us. Even a good earthly father knows how to love and care for his children. And an earthly father who truly loves his kids will make time to get to know them and interact with them on a daily basis. We can expect this with our heavenly father and Jesus. Opening heaven's door. In Matthew 18 verse 3 Jesus makes it clear we must become like a child to see and experience the kingdom of heaven. Remember when I talked briefly about how a born-again Christian has a brand new baby spirit man. This freshly revived spirit man is the one that the Holy Spirit brought back to life upon our salvation. Part of why I believe we must be childlike is that in the spirit we are babies and young children. Over time we must grow up and learn of the things of God through practice. This isn't just for our Christian lives here on earth, but we need to practice seeing and hearing in the spirit in our heavenly place. We see in Revelation 3 verse 18 that Jesus has I salved to help them see in the Spirit. 
Jesus can help us see if we are struggling to do so. He does this by opening our spiritual eyes and giving us a way to truly be a part of the kingdom realm in which we are citizens. Now the part of this I never understood until Jesus began teaching me about seeing in the spirit is how we should see. And though Jesus had been trying to help me get this concept through practice it wasn't until I read Ephesians 1 verse 18 that I discovered that our heart has eyes. And remember that song about opening the eyes of our heart. I loved that song as a young Christian, and somehow in my young spirit, I vaguely knew what it meant. But after these divine encounters and Jesus teaching me, I finally understood it with my mind as well. Now when Jesus first started teaching me how to encounter him it all started in the rooms of my heart. You will read about this in Heaven's Door. Anyway, I just accepted this by faith as it was so real and Jesus was there. But I couldn't really explain the concept logically. But now I want to share with you an image Jesus gave me to help understand it with my brain. It was a picture and memory I had of two adjoining hotel rooms. In the beginning I found that Jesus was trying to move my understanding of him from my mind to my heart. Like I said I allowed this, but it didn't make sense until he was teaching me about how my heart was connected to his by the Spirit when I got saved. Once I got this idea that is when he showed me the part about the two hotel rooms with an adjoining door. I had a memory of staying the night with my family in a hotel. Our parents got a room for themselves and then one for all us kids. The two rooms had an adjoining wall and an adjoining door in the middle. When we unlocked the door and opened it there was just another door that was locked. I had never seen anything like it. But then when our parents unlocked and opened their side we could go into their room and they could come into ours. Jesus showed me that when I got saved our hearts became connected with a doorway between them. Through his death on the cross his side of the doorway is always open. We see this through the ripping of the veil and the piercing of the spear in his heart. But now he is knocking on our side of the door and requesting that we open it. This connection of our hearts with Jesus is made upon salvation, but the union of our hearts happens when we keep opening the door when Jesus knocks. This is what is happening in Revelation 3 verse 20. Jesus is knocking at our heart's door and he is eager to commune with us. The actual scripture says that he will come in and eat with us and us with him. I'll talk more about us dining with Jesus at another time. Western thinkers. Now because this is so important, I'd like to talk some more about 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. We will find there a discussion about the foolish wisdom and intellect of man. We also see in these chapters that God's foolishness is wiser than man's wisdom. Now we know that God doesn't have foolishness, but the point is we cannot find any reason to be prideful in how smart we are compared to God. It also says that, God chooses the weak things to confound the strong and the foolish things to confound the wise. In essence God requires us to remain in a place of being childlike and simple-minded about the things of the Spirit for us to understand and see His kingdom. But here is a problem many of us have no idea that we face. In our Western culture we have been taught how to use critical thinking skills to process our world and everything in our lives. But this very way of thinking that we have been trained to do, is in direct opposition to seeing and hearing in the spirit. This is because the things of the spirit are not part of our physical world which can be studied and proven by facts. You see, through our educational system, television, and cultural norms we are taught to scrutinize any ideas or concepts that are not concrete or provable. Because we place so much importance on education and intelligence, we can at times feel superior to those who are uneducated. All of this pressure to be smart makes it where we will do just about anything not to look stupid in front of others. It is easy to see how this intellectual snobbery or pride can be used by the enemy to keep us from the spiritual things of God. I don't think Paul enjoyed being made a fool for Christ, but he did embrace it. I'm sharing all this because being childlike and simple-minded about God and his kingdom may not be easy for some of us. It will feel silly and at times we will think we are making things up. This is all part of the process of growing up as baby spirit beings. And God does not mind if we make up a few things as we are learning. As parents we know that small children need to use their imaginations to learn and grow. And just as we would gently stop our own children from eating their mud pies so will God make sure we don't get too far off base. 
Jesus has had to reassure me of this many times. Now back to 1 Corinthians 1 and 2. I highly recommend you read these chapters as there are keys that will help you to open your heart's door. As you understand the wisdom in laying aside your intellect to learn how to see through the eyes of your heart, you will gain access to Jesus' heart and his kingdom. Recently Jesus showed me something even more fascinating than being childlike to access God's kingdom realm. Jesus showed me that when we humbly connect with him heart to heart and spirit to spirit, we are actually doing in reverse what Adam and Eve did when they ate the fruit. Through their foolishness they purposely closed their heart's doors and chose to embrace head knowledge of God over their heart experience of him as their good papa. When we do this in reverse, we purposely lay aside our head knowledge to embrace our heart understanding of God as our good papa. In this way we return to the simple loving relationship Adam and Eve had before the fall. All in all, as you study these chapters you will better understand why God has purpose that his heart and his kingdom will remain hidden from any heart that is not humble and childlike in its love and trust of him. Our Western Faith Years ago, I read a book by Heidi Baker called, Compelled by Love. In the book she talks about the difference in the number and magnitude of miracles she sees among her people there in Africa who by our standards are uneducated and superstitious. As she discussed the difference she spoke of a specific account where a group from the Western Church came to help at her orphanage. As they were preparing a chicken dinner these intellectual Christians wanted to count the number of chicken pieces and the people eating in order to prove that God multiplied the food. In the end they proved nothing and missed out on the meal. When you listen to Heidi you will find that she sometimes sounds simple and childlike when she preaches. But that is where the kingdom of God is most accessible to her. Not in her intellectual understanding, but in her childlike faith. We may think we are doing God a favor by proving he does miracles, but we really aren't helping others learn to be childlike in their faith. That is why God has purposed that the kingdom would be hidden from those who want to prove and exploit it for their own means. The heart of Jesus is open to those who simply trust him with a childlike faith. I believe our faith and expectations are increasing because we now understand that Jesus wants to experience us personally. We can trust that Jesus is there knocking at our heart's door beckoning us to open it as we invite him inside to dine. When we embrace this idea like small children, we will not even consider the thought that Jesus won't be there. We will simply accept it as true. Then as we just trust him to do this for us, he will help us in every way to know him personally. With our childlike faith we will simply believe he is big enough to do it all. Thank you for listening to my podcast. This book, Stairway to Heaven's Door, is a companion book to my other book, Heaven's Door. And both of these books are used in an e-course to help you learn how to encounter Jesus. You can find more out about all the books that I've published and the e-course on my website, heavensdoor41.com. Bye now.